Hey guys, welcome back to another RC update and today we're obviously looking at my friend's HP Bullet ST Flux. Now, um, you haven't seen this truck for a while strictly because it actually hasn't been working for quite a lot of the time that we've had it. So as of the time of this video, this truck's about three months, four months old and I'd say for about three months it actually hasn't moved. Um, it's been in my shop for a good couple of months, maybe more. Um, so I've been slowly rebuilding it, so I'm pretty, I've pretty much rebuilt the whole truck um, from scratch because there was some definite issues wrong with this truck um, after we ran it. Basically, after we put the aluminium upgrades on from Asia Tees, um, I was out of the park with him and we were driving, I was driving my Hyper MTE and obviously he was driving his Bullet and my truck um, was completely stationary and his car tapped into mine like it was so slow, it was ridiculous but it like destroyed the front end, the uh, left hand A-arm, front A-arm came off um, it also snapped a diff drive cup as well as the actual diff um, ring gear so it, it, it took quite a while to get all these parts sorted um, luckily HPI did come through with their customer support, excellent customer support from HPI, um, brilliant customer support, uh, so we got quite a lot of the stuff under warranty, um, along with that they also sent us a clear shell, it's kind of a compensation type thing, which is why you see this new looking shell on there for the uh, HPI bullet, and I... After it's been rebuilt, we have run it, um, which is kind of kind of looks dirty, but we have run it, and it's actually held together. One screw has come off, um, but that's about it. It's actually it works fine now. Um, so, going through the list of problems we found with it. Uh, so, first off is the shell, which is why we replaced it. So this is the stock HP Bullet ST shell. This is the 2014 edition of the bullets. I know. At, um, They've HBO has literally just released the 2015 updated versions. From what I can tell, they've changed the wheels and tyres about, so they've put the ST wheels on the MT and the MT wheels um, on the ST, which makes more sense now. I don't know why they didn't do that in the first place, but hey ho, that's just me. Um, and all they've done is change the body shell, and I can't see actually any mechanical difference. It's the same electronics, same everything else. So I might be wrong, they might have updated diff internals and stuff like that, but obviously I can't say about actually having the truck. Um, but the first issue is the body shell. This is the issue, as you can see. Um, it, it's very weak. The rear, especially, needs to be made stronger. Um, purely because when the truck is wheeling, which this truck wheelies on 2S is ridiculous, but it flips and there's no wheelie bar, um, which I think there should have been or they should have changed the body design. But what happens is the rear, the rear of the shell actually hangs over the rear bumper and what happens is it's in a wheelie and the rear just creases up and breaks and all sorts of nasty stuff. So that's why we've got this brand new shell which I'll just bring up to you. I haven't actually finished this one off. It's all decaled up and stuff, but obviously the body holes need to be drilled. I'm also going to reinforce this one with shoe glue and drywall tape um, to prevent what happens that orange shall happen to this. But this is the uh, finished shell. So I went with the uh, gunmetal grey once again with this one, and I use um, some paint uh, masking tape, paint masking tape, and um, just did these random lines, which I can't, I can't quite like the look of. I might do this on a couple of my other body shells, but I kind of like the look of it. It's really clean. I like it. Um, obviously, we still using the stock radio. Nothing wrong with the radio system so far. But bringing the car up to you, um, so as you can see, it has been ran. Um, first up, big difference servo. Um, I've changed the servo out on this one for my mate, so this one is the Savox SW0230MG, uh, so this is a waterproof metal geared servo. Not the fastest, not the talkiest out there, but a definite, definite improvement over stock. Um, <laughs> it, the truck turns a lot better, it's just a much more responsive vehicle now, and the stock servo horn also goes straight onto it, so that's a good thing. Um, what else? The wheels and tyres. We've actually changed the wheels and tyres. Well, changed the combination of the wheels and tyres. So this this is a stock wheel and tyre for the HPI Bullet ST, the 2014 ST Flux. 
um, which comes with this. So it comes with this type of wheel style and this tractor tread style. But now they've put this on the MT, which makes a lot more sense. <laughs> but with ours, what we've done, we took the S, uh, ST tyres, or MT tyres now, and put it on the MT wheels, which I think looks a whole lot better. I just prefer these wheels to these. Um, just personal preference. But I just prefer them. Um, <coughs> and the reason we did that was because what actually happened is the... I don't know if you can kind of see it there, if the camera will focus on the right area, there, you can see this is how it's actually meant to look after like a lock nut's been removed and gone over and over again, but what actually happened to one is this, you can kind of see it's, it's been eaten away, and what happened was, that wheel was on the front, and what happened was in the first upgrade series I did for this truck, you, uh, I mentioned that one of the drive shafts was jammed, and basically what happened is, I don't know how, it's actually managed to eat into the wheel. I don't actually understand how that's happened. So that's what happened. So HPI warranted us a set of new wheels and tyres. And I just said what kind of mix match I wanted. And we've got that. Um, but there's actually nothing wrong with the wheels and tyres at all. It's just the fact one was eaten away. Um, I've also installed a new pinion gear, I believe this is a 14 tooth pinion gear, the stock is 12, I might not be 100% on that because I did this quite a while back, um, but it's, it's got a higher tooth pinion gear which I think is better suited for 2S running, you don't want to run this kind of gear on 3S, but even on 2S this motor is, doesn't get warm, doesn't doesn't begin to get warm, it's, it's quite a really good motor in ESC comedy really got in there, um, it's a shame the truck can't really seem to handle it, but hey ho. Um, Obviously you've got the aluminium parts still in here. Now, the aluminium parts is something else I want to touch on. Um, now what I did, I used GPM um, cast, uh, no, uh, top cast of blo caster blocks and hub carriers, front and rear, and I used GPM drive shafts. Now that wasn't the best idea because obviously manufacturers don't make their parts to mix match with other, um, other manufacturers, especially third party companies. So um, I might get the actual GPM set of these just so the drive shafts actually work because what happens is the drive shaft actually binds up into these aluminium parts. As you can see there, there's a little cool spring retainer to hold the pin in. But as you can see, there's another little silver mark, and what it is, is just the wheel is binding up against it. And as you can see, the wheel just doesn't want to move freely. It moves the whole thing, where it should just roll freely like that. So that's one thing. So at the rear, what's actually happened, I changed it back to the original dog bone setup. Um, and it's, the rear is fine now. So I will go ahead and put those GPM drive shafts back in at a later date once I've actually got the um, sort of hub sort of sorted out. I might just sand the inside down just to give the drive shaft some clearance. Um, other things to note on this car, the differing was obviously something that did go wrong. I don't actually have it to hand. I might flash up a picture on screen, I'm not too sure. Um, but what actually happened is during that crash it actually chipped um, one of the teeth off in the actual ring gear and um, that just proceeded to chew up the rest of the diff um, including the housing so we had to get a new one of them so we HBI sent us all the parts to make a complete diff which is what I did but the annoyance that I have with the bullet I haven't seen this on any other HPI car only the bullet but I haven't actually owned that many so um, <coughs> They've used self-tapping wood screws, basically, um, with Phillips heads. Now, Phillips heads, I'm not so fussed about. It's the self-tapping thing. Um, if you don't know already, self-tapping screws basically eat into the material that you're putting them into. Um, so plastic, especially, if you keep re uh, assembling, disassembling, assembling, and reassembling it, the hole basically wears out, um, insert joke here, but um, it basically the screw won't hold anymore because the hole has just become worn out. Um, and, but that's commonly why you don't see wood screws or uh, self-tapping screws going into aluminium. 
because aluminium usually has a pre-tax um, threading which is for machined screws which is what most RCs now use these days. Um, the Phillips doesn't really get me but the actual threading they use so the self-tapping is ridiculous and a lot of screws on this truck use self-tapping screws which is a terrible idea. Um, common things like the shock positioning screws is self-tapping, the bumpers self-tapping, the screws from the underside are self-tapping which is just a ridiculous idea to have because it some of these parts you need to keep disassembling, especially the A-arms, as I've proved when they've been weak. You need to take these out and all this sort of stuff, and they're self-tapping screws, so you can't keep doing it unless you want to replace the whole thing again. So, that's something that they need to address, I think. Um, you can kind of see this wheel's wobbling all over the place because the screw's actually fallen out, which is another negative on this car, because even with the stock ones, the screws just seem to get lost for no reason. I thread lock them, I do whatever I can for them and they just fall out. It's just one of those things. Um, might be a design flaw, who knows, but that's just one uh, one thing. Also the battery box, that's also another annoyance. Don't need this many clips, they use one, two, three, four, five, six clips to hold the battery box together which is ridiculous. Um, you don't need that many screws. I know they're trying to make it weatherproof, waterproof, whatever type of proof, but uh, it's battery proof nearly because you can't get into it. So it's, that's another annoyance I have. Um, but once the truck is together, and I will say this, once the truck is together and working, brilliant RC, absolutely brilliant RC, but you need to spend more than what the truck's actually worth to get it up to that point again. So we, I think my uh, my mate bought it for 300 and, no, 280 pounds, it was around that mark. Spend another 60 on upgrades, um, and in our case not all of them worked, but you spend that, then if you had his luck and ran into, ran into something and it breaks again, you've got to add up the cost of that again. Um, and it's a real shame because the platform itself and the idea is brilliant. Four wheel drive stadium trucks. There's not a lot out there um, in one tenth scale, and I love the idea of having a four-wheel drive stadium truck. Um, it's like the idea of putting and making the Stampede into a Rustler, it's a stadium truck, four-wheel drive stadium truck. And I love that idea, that's a brilliant idea. Um, but it just hasn't been executed very well with the bullets. Um, but I think with a little bit of work and tinkering here and there, this can become a really good RC, but it just needs a lot of work. And that is some, that's one thing that people, some people just don't want to do with their RCs. They just want to chuck a battery and go out. Sad to say this is not the car to do that with. It just, from my experience anyway, and my mate's experience, it's just not the RC to do that. This is more of a project RC, which is good if you've got the funds and the time and the passion to actually get, <laughs> to work on this thing, but it's just one of those things. Um, also the diff screws, the diff screws are also self-tapping, again a complete stupid idea, um, basically the diff obviously you've got oil around the ring gear and stuff you know to keep the thing lubricated, but I swear every time you go and put a screwdriver in the head actually just strips because it's all it's all slippery, it's all lubricated it's all, and it's completely stupid and also when you go and try and drill in with a new diff case which happened to me several times, I think I had a pack, two packets of 10 screws for the diff and I must have gone through one pack just stripping heads. Uh, it's just ridiculous and I was using brand new Phillips drivers, everything I could and they just kept stripping and stripping um, and it's, it gets beyond a joke um, at some point. But I persevered with it just because I wanted my mate to actually run his car because um, he's ticked off with the thing, <laughs> but I thought, you know, I'll actually try and work on it. And now I have, the car looks, I think it looks good and he thinks he looks good, which is obviously the most important thing because it's his car. But um, apart from that one screw that fell off down here, which is a common thing with quite a lot of cars, it's just laws of physics basically. But just one of those things, um, the car needs work. At this time, my kind of early review of the thing needs work, needs some money put into it, depending on what you want. Um, electronics are good, chassis is good, plastics not so good, screws terrible idea, um, body shell needs reinforcing from the very start. 
and they need to come out of a flipping wheelie bar because <laughs> it's ridiculous. I'll give you a demonstration basically. That is where the rear is and it just hits the back as you can see from here. I mean I know this shell is not 100% mounted but you get the idea that the shell overhangs that rear bumper. So that is my thoughts on this truck for now and just, just a quick update on what actually has been going on with this truck. Um, sorry it's kind of a negative with some positives thrown in there but just for give you guys an update if you have any questions or comments about this video or questions about this car or any of my cars on my channel at all please go ahead and comment in the section down below I'll be happy to help you um, if you like the videos on my channel um, and you want to see more from me please go ahead and hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with all the content I release every week and if you want more RC from me when I'm not on YouTube, please go ahead and follow me on Instagram. Um, details are going to be in the outro page and there you'll be able to get a hold of me pretty much whenever you want <laughs> and, and I'll be replying to you guys. I know a couple of you guys have already done it and I've helped, hopefully I've helped you guys out. So it does work. So I just hope I can help more people out there. And yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, also, if you have any kind of suggestions and stuff for the bullet, if you've had um, experience with it or know of any common fixes, please go ahead and drop that in the comment section down below too. I really would appreciate it on this build because obviously it's not mine, it's my mate's. Um, really would appreciate it if you could help me out and give him one badass truck. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Uh, thank you all for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.